and she found some of our stuff when we were kids. And I think I was in the second grade. She saw this little booklet I made, and it had all of my aspirations for the rest of my life. And in there, it was like, I wanted three kids. And she showed it to me. I was like, burn it. Burn it now. Hello. Welcome to Life Is It Just Me. This is the podcast where we look at things that we all go through, things we all think about, things we all have to deal with in life. This first season has been and still is all about the decision as to whether to have kids. My name's Paul. I'm joined, as always, by Ryan. Hello, Ryan. Hello. And our guest for this episode is Omonike. Hi, Omonike. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Good to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us, Monique. Tell us a bit about yourself to start off. Um, you know, I just turned 35 last week. Um, Happy birthday from last week. I'm a public sector worker. Uh, so I, um, I'm a trainee appraiser for the state of Illinois. And, you know, by night I have a bunch of weird hobbies. I watch anime, um, love horror movies. Uh, I am a brony, a furry, uh, just a lot of weird stuff. I like sewing as well. I usually sew like stuffed animals. I should one day sew practical things, but right now I just <laughs> like things that aren't practical. <laughs> but just sitting together. You're having fun. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think the My Little Pony episodes we'll do in the next season. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice. I've seen them all because uh, obviously I've got children and. Right. Um, and I've got an excuse to watch My Little Pony, even though I've watched it without them, but don't tell anybody. Um, <laughs> I think excuse is the wrong word. Reason is probably the wrong word. Yeah, yeah. Desire, the want. <laughs> Monique, take us back to your childhood and tell us a bit about your upbringing, please, which we know is going to be relevant to the conversation we're having today about, about children. Um, I had a very normal childhood. Uh, I grew up in a two-parent household. And, I mean, I don't live with them anymore, but... They're still together, uh, just standard mom and dad. Uh, I am the oldest of three children. Uh, I have a brother in the middle who's six years younger than me, and my sister is 13 years younger than me. So she's currently a college student at WashU. Um, but I had a very good childhood. I definitely didn't want for anything. I got a lot of opportunities that others didn't. Um, some of which my dad didn't care for, like video games. <laughs> but uh, my my mom wanted to have as many experiences as possible. Uh, but, you know, I grew up, I guess, middle upper middle class. I, I don't really know. I don't know how much my parents made because that's none of my business. But um, my mom was a general practitioner, so a physician, and my father was a civil engineer, and both are currently retired. But um, so, you know, they. They made a decent amount of money, and I grew up going a bunch of different places. We went to Florida like 10 times, but we've gone other places. We went to Nigeria once when I was younger, um, mm. that's where my dad is from. It was just, it was a really happy childhood. I cannot complain at all about my childhood. You described yourself previously as being a tomboy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess when I was really young, I did have. I guess more female friends than male ones, like maybe elementary school. Uh, so, you know, we played dolls and things every once in a while, but I remember in like the fourth grade, whenever recess, uh, we let, were let up for recess, I was always playing soccer and I was the only girl that played soccer <laughs> with a bunch of guns. Um, and it was a lot of fun. Um, one time I actually kicked a guy right in his chin. Like, oh. It was the guy I had a crush on, too. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did that go down? There. Definitely a psychology. <laughs> that absolutely sucked, but he forgave me because he was an accident. I was like, I'm not gunning for your leg. I, just, <laughs> I can't aim. I'm sorry. But no, um, fast forward to, I don't remember what I was really into in middle school for some reason. Uh, that was kind of a blur. It was a lot of bullying at that point, so I didn't. I guess I try and block it out. But in high school, I made more guy friends. I had, a, it was a good mix. Um, that's kind of when I was getting more into video games. Um, I think that's when we got a PlayStation 2 that I kind of shared with my brother. But um, I also got kind of in, really into anime at that time. 
I've been watching anime since I was eight. My neighbor Totoro was the first anime I ever saw. Um, very, very cute. Very, very cute uh, movie. But I started gravitor- gravitating more towards uh, like anime and gaming. And at the time, it was more console gaming, like the, like the PlayStation 2. But that's when I started developing more and more guy friends. Uh, I've always just liked weird things like mythology, like uh, Greek Roman mythology, uh, like dinosaurs, like uh, astronomy. Those were things I were interested in as a child. So it wasn't as much like playing house or anything like that. Sure. And then going off to college, uh, my my gaming increased. I found guys to play with. Most of my anime club there was guys. And you know, to this day, my my friend base is like ninety five percent guy, and that's you know because I am a gamer, because I am into anime, uh, I'm in the, I am a brownie and I'm a furry, and all of those are nerd habits, and nerd habits are traditionally largely white male and heterosexual except for the furry man. So um, I think that's why I have so many guy friends, and I just always gravitate towards kind of nerdy sciencey stuff which i can't i won't say is strictly a guy thing mm. um especially not now there are quite a few women in like the 70s but uh, i've just never been girly i've never you know really played in makeup um i don't think my mom let me wear makeup ever anyway so, unless <laughs> i was doing like a ballet recital and then i to this day i still don't know how to put on makeup i just slump it on and hope it's good um, <laughs> and I think I wear it like once a year. <laughs> it's a pain okay. in the butt. Um, the, re- the reason I ask these questions about your childhood and about about how you would see yourself, and, and you use mm-hmm. the word tomboy, is that having spoken to you previously before recording today, I mm-hmm. feel like it sets the scene well. It gets us, gives us an idea of who you are, which then leads me just to ask you just to briefly talk about the surgery that you've had and we'll go back in time more and explore this more later but you've had surgery before to prevent yourself from having kids um yes in 2016 um i decided to just go ahead and get a tubal ligation um and there weren't as many options back then even though it back then sounds like you know 20 years ago (laughs) but um I always knew I didn't want kids ever since middle school. Um, and my honestly dislike of kids has increased since I got older. Now, if I see a kid in the street, am I going to slap that kid? No, who does that? <laughs> don't do that. Nothing like no. that. <laughs> Please don't do that. We, do, we would no, like you no. to stay out of like trouble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I, I have no desire to do it. It's just, you know, I've always, kids just aren't appealing to me. They just aren't something I've ever desired. Um, there aren't, um, I, I don't, I'm not a childless person. I'm not missing something in my life. Uh, I'm a child free person, which means I'm very happy with that. Like, it's like the equivalent of saying debtless versus debt free. Um, when sure. people, you know, people are happy when they're debt free, but no one says they're debtless. Like, I don't really have debt right now, but you know, one day, <laughs> one day I'll get debt. That's, that's not Good how it works. Yeah. I like that comparison. Um, I totally stole that from the child free stuff. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but going back to the surgery, I'm sorry. I, I'm a squirrel and I wander all over. That's what we're here um, for. So do we. I, um, I decided to go ahead and take that final step. Uh, I think at the time I had Morena inserted, so one of the IUDs. Which I knew what that meant. And I can't remember what IUD stands for, but it's one of the ones that are inserted there up there. Um, and I decided I'm just going to go permanent because I know I don't want kids. And now the arduous task of finding a doctor to do it. Um, that is a major complaint uh, from child free people, specifically women. Um, you will see a lot of that on the child-free stuff. There are a lot of women who do want to get sterilized because they know they don't want kids. They can't find doctors to, um, for a variety of reasons. You know, you'll change your mind when you get older. You know, some just say, "Well, you got to have at least three kids before I start." Okay, well, I don't oh. want any. So what the <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's I, I won't go super political, but it, it's very much an affront on women's choice. Um, no one bats an eye when a woman says, hey, I'm pregnant. 
um, regardless of her age, if she's 15, people will still congratulate her. Yet if I'm 30, you'll question me up and down the line as to what I really want. And that doesn't make any sense to me. But luckily for me, um, I was working down in St. Louis. And I just found a, a doctor that supposedly would sterilize me. And I went to him and I explained what I wanted. I explained my choices. Uh, and just I've had this for literally decades. This wasn't a sudden, I woke up today and said, you know what? I'm going to have a two because I have nothing else to do with my time today. So <laughs> yeah, that didn't happen. So he says, um, well, you know, it's permanent, right? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. That's why I chose. Um, and he asked me a few other questions and he came back and he's like, you know, it's permanent, right? Like he wanted to shock me or surprise him. Yeah. It's, it's, I still know that from the five minutes ago. Me the first time. <laughs> and he's like, okay, I'm, I'm done with the song and dance. Um, you, we've got Esher or Esher, I don't know how to pronounce it, and we've got the tubal. Um, I know I bilateral self endectomy, I butchered that word, um, is also a thing now. I do not know if it was then. Um, I hadn't really heard much about it. I wasn't too familiar with it. My doctor didn't mention it, so it might not have been as widespread. Um, yeah. So he said Esher or tubal, and um, obviously the tubals were they you know, clip your tubes and then tie them. And you pray to God they don't untie themselves and glue themselves back together. Uh, with a with each Escher, they take these metal balls, stick them in your uh, tubes, and eventually your skin will kind of grow around it, completely blocking both those tubes. And with a bicep, they remove your tubes. Um, just for those who don't know. Um, and the issue with Escher is it's a metal ball. And he asked me, are you allergic to any kind of metal? And I said, yes, many kinds of metal. <laughs> I just, by wearing jewelry, unless it's sterling silver or solid gold, I'm going to break out. And he's like, yeah, we're not doing extra then because no. I don't know how that breakout's going to work out inside your uterus. So let's not yeah. find out. Nobody um, wants that. Nobody. No. Probably for the best. <laughs> no. Um, so, yeah, I chose uh, the tubal and I came home. I told my parents. Because I have to have someone to go with me. They have to knock me out for that. All you know, someone has to be with me. And you know, I told my mom, and she's like, "Okay, what day are they thinking?" You know, I'm pretty sure I can get off that day. You know, I could take you down there. I could do this. I could do that. That's my mom. My mom is the most giving person I've ever met. I strive to be like her. I'm nowhere close to her, but one day I may get there. Um, so she was all on board, and she's very supportive. I know a lot of childcare people get. A lot of crap from their friends and family and random strangers too which who are you go away <laughs> but with friends and family it's a lot harder to her and i've never gotten i'm very very fortunate um when the day came for the surgery she you know told my dad you know uh you know michael i'm going with nick a down uh down south we're going to do this procedure all of that and he's like what in like, what was the procedure and she said oh it's a tubal migration like, what's that again and so she had explained it to him a few times <laughs> <laughs> my dad doesn't have a, a medical background so but he's like oh, okay i get it. be careful be safe i'll see you when you come back wow. um we we went down there it was you know pretty seamless um you know my doctor explained everything to my mom uh using fancy medical jargon that she can understand I, um you know i was out i was back in um it was of course there was a lot of pain when i woke up because they did stuff um but it wasn't too bad. Um, I was more tired than anything because they used anesthesia. Hmm. And um, I was waking up and recovering. And my mom said, honey, we've got to go back. Uh, at the time, I lived down there. So I wasn't driving all the way back there. I was going to Maryland Heights where I live. Um, and I remember being crabby. like, I want to sleep at the hospital because I was just so groggy. <laughs> <laughs> I told my mom later on, I know, mom, you're struggling to get me out of this hospital. What you should have told me was, honey, the longer you stay, the more it's going to cost. Because she knows <laughs> I'm a pretty picture. My, I would have woke my ass right. Oh, no, okay, where's my pants? <laughs> <laughs> we gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I know it's a long round, roundabout story, but that was the story of my tubal ligation. I've never had issues with it. My only regret is I wish I could have had the bicep. Um, I believe there's supposed to be more benefits, I think, related to certain cancers when you get that as well. Yeah. But it wasn't an option. 
for me, and I don't know, and I didn't know much about it, and I don't know if my insurance would have covered it at all. The tubal cost me, I think, six hundred. Um, I think it was originally about around eight thousand. That's what it said on the bill, and then insurance cut it down to about you know six hundred. So. Right. Sure. Still think it should be free, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's another story. Something for you. No, no, it's interesting no. because we've had uh, another guest on the show who has had um, that procedure done, um, mm -hmm. and we're going to catch up with her as well to find out how that went. So we've done okay. the before conversation, yeah. and now we're going to have oh. the conversation with her for okay. after. So, um, so it's interesting because you're already you're kind of in that middle place where you know all about it, but um, mm -hmm. and we, we were learning for the first time when we spoke to her. So okay. really kind of interesting that. Um, what you're saying that even four years ago the options were different for you yeah it's, and also it's amazing I... how medicine changes um, um the issue with the tubal or any other uh sterilization is of course it's not it doesn't affect your sorry to get graphic it doesn't affect your period it's sure right, we're okay with graphic <laughs> No, okay. we can we can deal with that. So we're totally fine. There's, there's that, no that's as graphic as it is. Just the word <laughs> for ah, now. Um, but it doesn't affect that at all. And I have something called endometriosis, uh, which just makes life a living hell with your period. So even though I am sterilized, that doesn't do anything for endometriosis. And I knew that going in. It doesn't sure. affect your ovaries. So you know, I'm still on birth control. They, I'm on a new birth control they came out with. I think early this year. Um, and it erased my period. So I haven't seen the period in January. So. Awesome. <laughs> That's great. Um, so mo most of the year then? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, I hate the fact that I have to take something every day, but you know, sure, I've yeah. got on the alarm system at 10 p.m. every day. It goes <laughs> off. So, okay, I have to pause my game. Such an inconvenience. Okay. Monique, I want to take you back mm -hmm. to your what you said about your childhood. And you mentioned mm -hmm. you knew from middle school that mm -hmm. you didn't want to have kids. Could you put an age on that? Crap. Well, what was I in middle school? <laughs> Probably about 12, I'll say that. I think okay. you enter high school in 14. Sure. Um, so about 12, about I 12 just, years old. When I was in elementary school, so like eight or something like that, nine, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I did, played with other kids because I was a kid, but it started, it just was appealing less and less to me. I just wasn't really a kid person, especially like really, really young kids and even babies. Um, I, I, Babies don't really appeal to me any either. I'm not going to say babies are horrible creatures or anything like that. <laughs> it's just art for me. Um, and they cry a lot. So that's, they cry. And I'm not, I'm not signing up for that. I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. I'm doing that. Um, but at that time, I just, I just realized it wasn't something I wanted. Before that, like in elementary school when I was really young, I, I wanted kids because that's what you do. Uh, it's what everybody does. And, you know, obviously my parents did the same thing. And so my, my, I think it was a few years ago, my, my since my mom retired, she retired first. Uh, she's been going through their big, huge basement and going through everything and trying to get rid of stuff and trying to clean, to just do a huge deep clean down there. And she found some of our stuff when we were kids. And I think I was in the second grade. She saw this little booklet I made and it had all of my aspirations for the rest of my life at the age of like, seven or whatever I was. <laughs> and in there was like I wanted three kids and she showed it to me I was like burn it burn it now <laughs> I never want to see that again wow <laughs> <laughs> she didn't actually burn it no but um, <laughs> she, she did laugh <laughs> she just found it funny that she found this um, and I was like yeah that's me. that's where my mind was then but it, it's changed a lot so um, just getting older I never had that desire and I won't say I'm not a nurturing person. I'm very nurturing towards my family, towards my friends, towards my hedgehog that hates me, but I still love her. Um, <laughs> you have a hedgehog. And, yep, she's in the other room. She's love asleep right that. now. It's the day. <laughs> um, but I, so I'm a very nurturing, caring person, just not as much towards little humans. Like I, I, I told Paul before, I used to work. Uh, when I took Taekwondo a few years ago, 
I would help the, the them train some of the kids, like some of the advanced kids. So I did work with kids. Um, a lot of those kids were good kids. Um, one had some, one had issues. I couldn't really deal with him, and two were just lazy. But most of them were really good kids. So it, as an adult, I I have worked with kids. I've worked with kids uh, at my church back when I went to church. Um, so I say I don't care for kids, but I used to say I hate kids, and I don't think that's correct anymore. Um, they just aren't for me. They aren't really my favorite thing. Uh, like I'll see a kid in public, and I'll kind of walk this way like, <laughs> around. Again. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna do anything. Um, but they just. I if you show me your baby, I'm not going to fawn over it. Uh, if you, well, if you say, "Oh, here's my baby," I'll oh, it's you. I will say that to be polite. To say, be you polite. Have an ugly ass baby or anything? No, who does that? But I'm not going to go out of my way to hold it and coddle it and and do all. It's just it's just. And I think I learned that in middle school. I was like, yeah. Do you think that was around thing. about the same time that your youngest sibling came along? Well, she drove me nuts. Maybe that was because <laughs> I have my my brother in the middle, but we always got along really well. He's a gamer like me. Um, he's an angry gamer, but he's a gamer like me. Is he rage quitting um, all the time? <laughs> you can hear him because he still lives with my parents, so you can hear him yelling all manner of curse words from his bedroom at night, and he's playing with people. But my sister and we get along fine now. Um, and she's finishing up her last year at Wall Street. I think it's business and fashion. Uh, those are her majors. But just, I think I had to help with her a little bit. I definitely wasn't one of those people that, like the, the oldest of like six kids and their parents were either working all the time or they're just flipping lazy. And they would make the older kids essentially take care of the younger ones. Yeah, so you didn't uh, have to like do a, that. You weren't like no, taking care like of it. Um, no, like my, my, my mom would say, I'm running to the store. Can you watch your siblings for an hour? And I was like, you know, 13 or 14. So I'm old enough to do that. I can do that. That's that, that was the extent of me <laughs> caring for my siblings. I was like, okay, it's an hour. I can do that. Um, but so, yeah, I, you know, I learned how to change diapers and things like that, uh, with my sister, with my brother. I think I was six. So I probably didn't learn that. <laughs> Uh, at the time but for my sister definitely and you know i helped with that um i did minor things every once in a while i beat her or something like that but it it definitely wasn't a case where i know some child free people child free people are like that because they essentially had to be parents to their siblings because they didn't yeah. have a choice that's also not it, it's not the case with me um that was something that I had, I had wondered when I saw the, the age gap between you and your siblings, mm -hmm. whether that had been the case, that you'd had to take care of the youngest sibling. And that you kind of got it out of your system. I'd wondered if that was <laughs> what part of your decision making process. But it's nice to hear that like it, it's, that wasn't an influence for you. It was no. you've always just felt sure about yourself and yeah. the way you feel. Yeah. To me, what strikes me is, is it's been so so striking, I guess. I, I work in a secondary school, as we would call them here. Mm -hmm. I work with young people who um, I just, who, who are 11, 12, 13, the sort of age oh. you, you are. To me, I can't imagine having a conversation with with one of those pupils and they for them to be as sure as it seems that you mm -hmm. are in your... Mm -hmm. Or are you aware, I guess, in your your mindset back then? Can you think of can you think of a, of a point when you realised that was the case, or can you perhaps think of what was influencing you at the time that then made that mindset stick? Unfortunately, I don't know if I can. I just I think I was gradually realising that's not really my thing. Uh, it definitely wasn't something I was thinking about too much as a middle schooler. Um, I think it's manifested itself more in high school. I know that inkling was there in middle school, but I guess it got stronger in high school. Um, I had some, you know, female friends who, because I, I would tell people all the time, I don't like kids, I don't like kids, I don't like kids. And they would say, yeah, you're going to be the first one of us to get pregnant. You're not even going to make it out of high school and you'll be pregnant. Uh, and they would constantly tease me about that. And high school ended. And all three of them got pregnant. Before high school. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that's like I don't know if I can middle finger, but yeah, that's, that's what I um, so yeah, I, I got that teasing in high school, but that I think it manifested itself more in high school because that's generally a time where people can get pregnant, or well, I'm yeah. sorry, do get pregnant or get someone pregnant. Um, I yeah, I guess talks about more about that period, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I thankfully do not remember anyone in my middle school getting pregnant. Because right. that's, I mean, it, it is physically possible, hmm. but that's a horrifying concept to me. That you're 12 and you're pregnant, or you're 12 and you've got someone pregnant. That's, it, yeah. Yes, I know it can happen, and it has. But I think that's why it was, that's when I first got the idea in my mind, but it wasn't something I thought of a lot. Yeah, way. not a fully developed concept, but definitely no. in the back. The seed of it was like because it wasn't it wasn't in my the forefront. The forefront, you know, that was when I was getting bullied a lot. So that was in the forefront of my mind at the time. Um, and even like adults, they don't they don't really talk to you about having kids and things like that when you're in middle school. Most don't talk to you about that. Like no one in my family, no one in my church. They're not talking to us about having kids in high school either. <laughs> they want us to not do that. They want us to you know, go off to college or trade school or the military or whatever you choose. To do. Sure. Uh, so that inkling was there in middle school, but it, I think I expressed it a lot more in high school because that was definitely the time where it was more common to have a kid. A monarchy, I want to ask you about something you mentioned before when we were prepping for for this this episode uh -huh. you spoke about a misconception that exists we met through reddit we met on a, i think it was a child free subreddit and you yep. you said that there's a misconception that if you are a child free person that you immediately hate children where does that yep. come from um there's a lot of theories i don't know if there's any specific like scientific research to back this up so this is probably going to be anecdotal um, and I think part of it involves society, um, society, our society as Americans, very, very kid centric. Um, we are, uh, just a lot of leeway for kids and for, you know, a lot of people who have them. So, and it's just, again, it's also, it's often expected. You are going to grow up, get married, kids, retire, die. That's your life. Congrats. Um, well done, and... you did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm done. Um, <laughs> not don't, do, don't do it on video, not, not, not finished speaking to you yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, they killed me. <laughs> well, my this conversation know. pushed her over the edge. <laughs> Never happened. Just, just purge, purge, purge this conversation. Um, <laughs> but no, that is the, if you're not having kids, you automatically hate kids. And it's, I think a, part, a big part of it is society. Just how can you not want kids? You must be a child hating monster. And <laughs> it's, it's not at all true. There, there are some people who don't care for kids in varying degrees. And I'm probably a terrible person to ask this because I'm not a fan of kids, but I don't outright hate them. Um, there are a lot of people who work with kids. They are teachers, they are nannies or au pairs. They volunteer big brothers, big sisters. Um, so there are a lot of people who regular social workers, they regularly work with kids and they love kids. They just don't want their own. There are some people who are eh about strangers' kids, but like they are the cool uncle or aunt and they love their nieces and nephews. Um, there are some people who just flat out do not like kids and that's fine too. But it is just like, with most things, it is a spectrum. There, yeah, there are people yeah. on one side, on the other, and many, many in the middle. Um, so I think just the fact that, a, especially a woman, if she doesn't want kids, she must be a child-hating monster. Um, it, there's a lot of misconceptions about women that date back, especially if they aren't married by a certain time. And you're a barren spinster that's you know, a crabby wish that lives in the forest. I hope that and, that's changing, though. I do so hope that that is changing. Like modern society should be getting around to the fact now that 
everybody has different choices and making different choices and that's okay. Like I'm not really sure why we're so slow to change, but it, well, we're uh, American, so <laughs> <laughs> speak for yourself. That's all I have to say on that. Uh, <laughs> and yes, I say that as an American. Um, again, won't get into politics, but no, our politics, our politics are well on display right now. Well, yeah, the the thing is, it's the same in our country. It's very much a fifty fifty split in our country mm-hmm. at the moment. Um, where we had uh, a, a big vote for leaving Europe or staying in Europe. Yes. Um, so you can see that the society as a whole does seem to be in that transition period. They're mm-hmm. fractured. There's half people who believe another thing or half people. Yeah. It's maybe not even a belief structure. It's just, it just, I think it's a very good representation of how society at the moment is on a pivotal point where yeah. it could go either way. And um it's a, I suppose in a hundred years' time, when people are looking back, that'll be an exciting thing to look back on, and we'll not. But we don't realize kind of where we are in that point of history right now. So transitional, transitional yeah, it's very transitional. Yeah. I think it's it's very evident by the fact that big Western countries like America and Britain mm-hmm. are are split right down the middle, um, yeah. and on their viewpoints of things and probably children and childcare and having children mm-hmm. and all those things are be included in that kind of spectrum that you're talking about with um, that just difference of opinion with the, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's really interesting, uh, Monica, with what you said, a number of those sort of images um, really, really, what's the word? Um, epitomize Ryan and I in the sense that you spoke about teachers who who do their job and they love their job and they work with with children young people and they don't know or they don't want to have kids and i'm sort of in that boat right now where i don't know myself you spoke about ryan you spoke you spoke about um people want to be the cool uncle or the cool aunt and that's ryan, where i ryan was is, yeah. a few years back yeah absolutely in previous episodes he's dialed into that and spoken about that and <laughs> i've spoken a great length about that it's, it's, yeah. it's so interesting that, that that permeates throughout the world i wondered um a monarchy what your experience is have you had have you have you had people who have been affronted by your decision have you had people who have basically said that well as a child free woman you must hate children i thankfully haven't in part because i've said that myself back when i was saying i hate kids that's what i would say i hate kids so Ah. i didn't give you a chance to tell me that i just told (laughs) you take that but just again, I've been extremely fortunate because I read a lot of, you know, the other stories on that stuff specifically, um, and a lot of people aren't as lucky as me. Um, they're just affronted on all sides by friends, by family, by that lady in the grocery store that can't mind her own business. It really doesn't make any sense. But um, so I, I, I verbally have told people I'm not a kid person. I'm just not a fan of kids. But <clears throat> excuse me. But I've never been really, um, I've never been like attacked for my choice. That's um, good. That's good people, to hear. I, yeah, it, it's, and <laughs> again, I'm very fortunate. I'm very lucky in that regard because a lot of people don't get that. Um, you know, I've told people, you know, I'm, I just don't want kids. I keep, a few people, you know, ask why. Um, and I'll just say, I'll just explain. They aren't for me. They're not, I'm not interested in them. I, I don't want to be a parent. And they say, oh, and we talk about something else, which is how it should be. Um, yeah. But yeah, there are some people that uh, just, and now these are stories I've read on like Reddit. So these aren't my stories. Just from a boss or a coworker or, uh, or a family member, you know, why aren't you having kids? You know, you, that's what women are supposed to do or, you know, you should be carrying on the family name, you know, if you're male or female or male, respectively. Um, it's Or I want grandkids or, you know, whatever it may be. <laughs> <clears throat> and I feel so awful for those people because how does your, how, how does me having, not having kids affect you? How does that affect your life? Yeah, I, I often wonder why people who have absolutely no investment in your life at all feel like they have a, a say in your life 
Like you're I saying, the woman in the grocery store, for example, yeah. why? Like she's never going to see you again. Why does yeah, she care? Know you. Way, woman, know uh... Well, how dare you <laughs> not fit the mold? That's what yeah. I would. And some people feel. Yeah, how dare you be an individual? <laughs> it's yeah. Some people are like just you know this is what we do as human beings. You need to fall in line. Some people have that. Uh, I understand, you know, some you know parents want grandkids to spoil, um, but the thing is... That was is definitely with... my experience. Uh, <laughs> my mom was definitely okay. like, can, can, when are you having, when are you having grandkids, Ryan? When, when's that happening? You've got married, so surely yeah. grandkids? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, yeah, it, it's a bit of an expectation, but that, that I know my mom, so that she's obviously yeah. going to be like that. But um, other people weren't very pushy about it. Like my mom yeah. is a Lauren to herself and that's okay. But, um, and she's, she's got some investment in my life. So she, yeah. you know, she's allowed to have um, yeah. a say, but random people in the street or even friends that like you see, you see them, but they don't, they don't live your life for you. So no. like, how can they say what you should and shouldn't do? I mean, this, the, the reason why we did this podcast was one, not to be judgy in any way. We just find mm -hmm. it really interesting how, mm -hmm seemingly mundane topics or seemingly everyday topics um there's different walks of life different people different um thought processes and it's the thought processes that spark our enthusiasm on this because um the why is kind of the interesting part of this for us um and that's probably evident in the kind of questions we've asked you um about mm -hmm. your childhood and your thought process and your decision making process um is there anything else you could pinpoint uh, or is it just do you think your own personality that is is the reason for it that it's there's no kind of external factor it just is who you are i think it really is more who i am i was never pressured to have children um yeah. and the people who throw in their two cents i have no problem ignoring them because it's easy to throw in your two cents when you lose nothing when you're not yeah. vested in it. Um, so yes, easy for you. Oh, you have cute, you know, babies and da da da. da. You aren't <laughs> raising them though, are you? I no, would. Exactly. Be. It would be all my. I could lose, and I, especially as a woman in the modern era, I think more and more women are thinking about, actually thinking about whether they want kids, when they want kids, and it's because more and more there's so much information at your fingertips, and you can see what it takes to raise a kid, not just financially, but there are a lot of other costs to it. Um, and so I, I know those costs. I don't want, it's not worth it to me. And yeah. so I know it, my mind isn't going to change. And I'm very fortunate that I have parents that um, support me in that decision. I actually had a conversation like that. I was uh, visiting my parents, you know, weekly visit over at their house. Um, and my sister happened to be there. And it, we, we were talking about dating, and my, my sister and I. And my dad just happened to walk in the room. And we were, <laughs> she brought up some goofy dating, uh, dating service where it was like men pay and you go. I don't know. It was very weird. It was something I was like, that don't sit right with me. That's weird. I don't want men paying me for dates. That's creepy. <laughs> um, that was like an escort. I don't know. I'd be okay if you paid me for if you paid me for a date. I think I'd be okay with that. I'm okay. my wife. I'm like, I was going to ask, um, what's your wife going to say about this? <laughs> yeah, so I don't think she'd be happy. But, uh, but mind you, she'd be like, as long as it's just dinner and it's just you know, um, no handholding, plat platonic dating, uh, <laughs> and you're making money for it. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> it, was, it was a very weird thing that my sister brought up. My dad happened to walk in the room. And he's like, what the heck are you two talking about? That sounds weird. <laughs> we explain. Um, and he so, so what about, was the name of that, that, that app? I'm just gonna, I, let me I just write that I name. Remember. I immediately <laughs> forgot it when she told me. I'm, I'm not. You know, <laughs> I tolerate OK Cupid right now, and that's it. But, um, but he, you know, he walked in, and I asked him, you know, how do you feel about us you know, getting married and everything? And he's like, you don't have to get married or have kids to be happy to fulfill myself your mom and that honestly surprised me because my dad's nigeria um they're they're very big on they don't necessarily have big families um i all the nigerian uncles and aunts i know here in the states they have three or fewer kids they don't have big right. okay so um but the fact that they're very family centric that surprised me when he said that to me i was like are you are you wait what 
I mean, I'm sterilized anyway, <laughs> so that ship sailed. But <laughs> it's it's weird. he's like, yeah, I, I don't care if you have ever get married, if you ever have kids, it's up to you. It's like, yeah, maybe he just like, wanted you to know that he was still on your side, regardless. I mean, yeah, I, I was very, I was very pleased. I was just surprised. And I was like, aren't you supposed to, you know, get married and pass on the family? He's like, well, maybe like in the 80s or whatever, but yeah, we've gotten <laughs> past that. We don't care anymore. I was like, okay, cool. That, that works in my well, I think an, uh, an argument for that is probably how many failed marriages there's been since like the 80s to now, from what, mm. and people have stayed together because only because of kids, some people. Yeah. Um, and like the stati- I, I don't have the statistics to hand, so I'm just making this up mm. off the top of my head. Twenty nine percent all. Twenty nine yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure the percentage for for failed marriages in the over for well in the last 30, 40 years has to be fairly high. It has to be. They shot up, and I thought it was about fifty fifty ish. Is it as, wow. is it as much as fifty fifty? Yeah. And in divorce today. Um, but yeah, since I think the seventies, they they it shot up. It's probably because it has become easier and the stigma is mm-hmm. not as big. And, right. uh, so and women have more choices as opposed to... Exactly, yeah. So uh, just everybody more has more choices. And mm-hmm. I think that's a good thing. Like, the world should be full yeah. of choices and and not people not be, like, judged for that. Yeah. Let's talk about dating. I'm really interested to know... Yeah, so that app again. No, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> Let me just get my pen. <laughs> I would have to text my sister because I've I, I never heard of you before. And I immediately forgot it that night. So unfortunately, I, I honestly cannot tell you what it's called. Well, That's I okay. I we're, we're, only co- we're only joking. <laughs> I'm sure Ryan will message you privately later for yeah, me right, the yeah. app. <laughs> <laughs> well, Monique, what is it like approaching dating as a child-free, as a sterilized person? This is Obviously, you don't lead with that. I'm surely, I'm surely that's not like your first thing on a profile or in a, if you meet somebody, you don't go. So I don't want kids. Is that your first introduction to? Kind of, yes. Oh, really? Um, wow. But I am definitely the wrong person to ask. I'll try and answer. Uh, my last relationship was when I was an undergrad. That was 2010. Okay. I haven't been in a relationship oh. since then. So, um, and as I told Paul before when we talked before, you know, before the recording, um, a large chunk of that was I was trying to find my own thing. I was trying to get a job, you know, get start a career. Yeah. Didn't happen with the grad school, da 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 da. So I was caring about career and where I'm gonna stay and settle. So for me, I wasn't focused really at all on dating. Not almost none of it these past ten years. Um I've gone out and I've met people in like my meetup groups. I run an anime group. I run an history science theater group now currently online. Um, but I would meet people that way, but nothing really ever panned out. There was one guy who was interested in me, but we hit a crossroad. He is on the fence about kids um, and he is pro-life. I am very much pro-choice and those two can't really work together. So outside of him, I haven't really seen much dating um, or have that kind of experience. I will say I am on OkCupid now. Um, I just, on a whim one day during COVID, I was like, yeah, I'll make another profile, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, and I got quite a few matches and intros or whatever they call them. Um, but it's, it's a lot of people lament, a lot of child free people lament that it's really hard dating when you're child free. And for me, like on my profile uh, on OKCupid, it's on there. Uh, It's on there twice, (laughs) actually. (laughs) Um, They have a little, uh, like uh, if you get on someone's profile off to the right side, there's like a little blurb, like a little summary of why, you know, religion, or I'm sorry, race, religion, um, whether you smoke, whether you drink, whether you have kids, whether you have pets, it's, it's at the top. So, if, and if you don't want to go through somebody's big, big giant profile, you can look at that little blur. The in lazy part blur. of dating, the, the lazy window in the corner. I, 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 <laughs> and at times, I will admit, I do use the way, the way I look at profiles is like, I'll get someone, some guy will message me and they'll send me an intro. Uh, and obviously their picture is there, but I'm not really going to pay attention to your picture. I'm going to see it because it pops up when you send me an intro. But I'm not going to look at that. I'm going to click on your name. And the first thing I'm going to look at is that little blurb, to be perfectly honest. 
and I'm looking for a couple things. Um, on my profile, it says does not have kids, does not want kids. Yeah. If it says does not have, but might want, but wants, or has kids, <laughs> then I'm passing right there. That yeah. helps me cut people out. Yes, yeah, so I, I can see how helpful that would be for, for you if you're not looking for the, the children in your life. Right. Um, to, it, have, it, to have a section that says um, not not having kids, not wanting kids. I mean, that, And that I use that section for other things as well. Like, uh, I do not smoke. I am not looking for a smoker at all. Yeah. Um, in that blurb, if it says you smoke, I pass immediately. Because that, that just cuts down on time. If I look at that blurb and there's nothing that shoots out of me, then I will actually go through your entire profile and I'll read yeah. everything about you. Yeah, it's and a useful so, summary. I understand. Yeah. And, and I use that summary on my own profile, but at the very bottom, I have a list of things that I'm not, uh, I'm not looking for as well. So, like, it says down there, I do not want to date a smoker. But it also says, I am a child-free individual, which means I do not want kids. Biological, adopted, step, step, step parent, or foster. So if you right. have or want kids, I'm probably not the girl for you. That is in the very bottom of my profile. But as I said, my not wanting kids is on there twice. And yet I've still gotten messages from devs, and I've gotten messages from people who will actively want kids. And I just... Ah, but you see why that is. That's people looking for a challenge to change your mind. I was like, just going like, to say that. People be. just go out of their way for a challenge sometimes. So it's, uh, and I, can, it's, I can change your mind. I've got a kid, so it doesn't mean you don't want to date me. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why, I mean, it's at the bottom of the... So, I mean, I heard nobody reads profile. I mean, I do, but <laughs> especially nobody reads profile. So I have on there. I, that's why I define child-free. No kids. Biological. Yeah. Adopted. Step, which means your kid or foster. <laughs> <laughs> N O N E none. <laughs> yeah. So, and they might, there might be some guys who think they can, but they're not going to get to talk to me. Because if you put, you have kids or you might want them, I will just click pass. I'm not going to respond to your interest because right in that blurb, I've weeded you out, but basically, it sounds awful, but. Like, I don't want someone with kids. I don't want someone who smokes. I don't want someone who does drugs, et cetera, yeah. and so forth. I can just imagine somebody watching this going, ah, but, I'm, you know, I'm split up from my other half, and I've got a kid, and I really like you. I would really like you to respond. To, like, I'm sure you're a like, lovely person. But... <laughs> <laughs> what percentage, Monique, of, of, of matches or, or of pro <laughs> profiles would you say are males who either are child free or would be happy to sort of fall in line with, with that expectation? That I can't answer. I would need actual statistics for that. Looking at the people who've sent me messages, like I spoke with, I think I spoke with like six or seven guys this time around. Right now I'm just speaking with two of them because the others just kind of fell off. I just, whatever, it happened. Uh, there were a few other guys that have, doesn't have, doesn't want on their profile. Um, but so they, I passed on them for other reasons. So okay. like they were looking for short term dating and hookup. And I was mm. like, well, nope, <laughs> not looking for a hookup. Um, so there have been some guys I ended up talking to and some I did pass on that did say they didn't want to. Um, I think I spoke with a couple that said might want. That, that's a risk. Mm. But it's it's just it's up to you if you want to take that risk because they could go either way um but i would be very upfront with you know i do not want kids so if that person decides they do we will break up that's just going to happen um and i'll let you know that i'm not i guess i'm a weird person if you read my profile you are reading me hmm. i do not lie on my profile at all um so what I say on there, on there is that's who I am at this point in time. Broadly speaking, would you say it's a very small number of profiles that you have? Most likely, to? yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. The majority of profiles are going to say, well, a lot of them just say doesn't have kids. And that second part isn't filled <laughs> out. So I just... Mm. Nice and ambiguous for you oh, then. Sure. So <laughs> it's... 
doesn't have kids. Might want about. them tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but I, yeah, that one. I was like, okay, I'm gonna need you to fill up that second half <laughs> <laughs> yeah. of what you want. So I'm giving you a uh, chance, but you need to answer that second part mm-hmm. of that question <laughs> first. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of a lot of things I look at when I look at a profile. That little blurb it helps just to weed out things I absolutely don't want, like the yeah. smoking, like the kids, etc. But I also look at your full profile on OKCupid. You can answer questions, and that determines your match percentage with okay. other people. I will look at those questions you answered, especially the ones we disagree on. And mm. and I, you know, some of them like okay, I don't really care, but some of them okay, that's a red flag for me. I I've got to take it. Sure. There's a lot when it comes to looking at profiles for me. Interesting. Yeah, it's a big decision though. Um, dating is a minefield. Whether you have um, a, a list of things that you need to criteria, everyone's got criteria. I mean, if anyone says they don't, they're lying. So yeah. you're sure of your criteria. You know what you're looking for. Nobody can can give you any hassle for that. Um, <laughs> it just um, it still surprises me that. Um, the whole child-free thing is, is still a bit of a stigma. Like, surely there are a lot of people out there who are in the same kind of position as you, looking for freedom. Well, I don't want to say freedom in like a well, freedom, but from a Scottish person, that's a different it has different connotations. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, just there the must be. Uh, a change in the way society thinks there has to be because okay. uh, again i don't want to get um, I, it's not for us to judge anyone's choices or decisions but there must be pros to to being child free um as you said freedom is a big part of it um uh, i can kind of do whatever i want whenever without having to plan around someone else i mean frankly being single that's that's true as well. I don't have to plan around a significant other or a spouse. Um, the difference being, if I get a spouse, cool, but I, I do never want kids. Uh, but I like having this this freedom to do whatever I want whenever within reason, whenever I want. Um, <laughs> Thanks, coronavirus. Yeah, I have, exactly. Yeah. I have so many examples. Um, just. Because you know, I'm a big nerd, I'm in a lot of different fandoms. Uh, there's a lot of conventions I, I like to go to. Anime yeah. conventions, My Little Pony conventions, furry conventions. Um, I attended a My Little Pony convention online last week. Um, with It's harder to do that when you have you know, a spouse and or kid. I guess unless your spouse is into it too. Um, it's just more of, a, it's going to be more expensive for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so instead of paying for, you know, a bunch of other like badges and what, you know, so my kids can get in, I can buy random crap that I don't need, but I want anyway. It's all over my house. So I'm very, very good at that. So you can see, but, um, I like the fact that I can just, I have the freedom to do whatever. I, you know, I, I went to Japan last year with four guy friends on a whim. We found round trip tickets for $660. We're like, yeah, we're going to buy these tickets because they're super, super cheap. That's not something I could do if I had kids, um, maybe with a spouse. Maybe a spouse would go with me, but with kids, yeah. it'd be a lot difficult. And it would be very awkward me being the only one with kids and then four dudes that are single. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it'd, be, yeah. it'd be a bit uh, a bit difficult. <laughs> uh, but I like the fact that I could just pick up and travel. We were supposed to go to Japan this year uh, and then COVID. So... Um, <laughs> Thankfully, we got our money back. But we're planning on going next year because we can, because yeah. we have the money, yeah. because we can, we have the vacation time at work. We can take that off. Um, I even not just travel, just being here at home. Um, I can have my own schedule, and I'm very schedule oriented. Um, you know, I've got my checklist of things to do. So me too. I, I don't have to, I can just follow that schedule without having anyone else, you know, just, just being constantly interrupted by yeah. others. Uh, I like the fact that I can just stop working and I can work on my plushies whenever I want to, or I can make these YouTube videos without being interrupted. Yeah. Um, 
I also, you know, I'm saving, well, I still spend a lot of money, but I'm, you know, I'm saving a lot of money. I know kids are expensive. I think the average is 250K to raise a child, something like well, that. I haven't done the math supposedly. for myself, but I do know that it is. It's, it's an expensive, expensive. It's expensive. And that's, I think, like American dollars, so it might be cheaper or more expensive somewhere else. But sure, sure. on average, that's what they say. Um, so I'm not spending that money on the kids right now. I can spend money on other things. And I appreciate that. I'm, you know, I'm again saving money for a house. I want to be a homeowner at one point. Um, I, I've been doing that for years, and that got interrupted. Um, an old lady not paying attention T-boned my car last Thanksgiving. Ooh. I don't have a car anymore. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Um, so you know, I just not being responsible for anyone else, not having to pay that extra cost, makes saving a lot faster. So, you know, I saved up a bunch of money for my prospective house. I had my, you know, six month emergency fund in place. And then idiot old lady doesn't pay attention and completely totals my car on Ooh, impact. Ouch. Um, and, you know, I got how going. How fast with that and was I got she going? She was turning was she into going? my lane. There were two left lanes and she wanted to go left. Ah. And yeah, she decides, you know what? I want to be in your lane too. No, that. Stay in this lane. You can also <laughs> turn left. Lady, what are you doing? But yeah, just bam. And wow. my Impala is dead. My Impala would never rise again. Um, but because I was able to save so much, you know, it took two months to find it, but I got a much better car, a 2016 Toyota Prius uh, with the fancy bells and whistles. And I paid for that in cash. I have, I've never had a, a, a car payment. I've paid for it in cash. Easily the most thing, uh, the most expensive thing I've ever bought in my life. But <laughs> I credit the fact that I've been able to save uh, for it. That I I now have a really awesome car that I will hopefully last me until I can get my Tesla. So um, <laughs> until someone that else is my has ultimate it. goal. Yeah. But you know that's for when I turn fifty. But um, so that is you know yeah there are financial reasons. Just the 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 fact that you can do whatever you want even when and that's. The freedom to do what you want, the freedom to be flexible and kind of change with what's going on, it can happen in the best of times and it can happen in the worst of times. Um, <clears throat> when I got out of graduate school, after I got my grad degree, I worked for an engineering firm uh, as an environmental scientist. And a bunch of things happened, work dried up. I got laid off very suddenly. And it was very devastating because I, obviously didn't expect it. And, you know, of course the first thing, well, when I go, I first thing I did was I went home and I just cried in the ball for three hours. <laughs> but after that, I called my mom and I explained to her what happened. And she, you know, she was, you know, crying along with me because that's the person my mom is. Um, but, and she reminded me, you know, everything happens for a reason. She's religious. I am not, but, you know, I appreciate that, that aspect and that spin that she said she gives on my life. Um, and she's like, you know, you weren't really all that happy there anyway. And she was just trying to make me feel better. And one thing she said was how, how lucky I was that I'm not tied down by anything right now. The fact that I suddenly lost my job was horrible and horrifying. But I can go anywhere and find another job. I could, you know, come back to Springfield, which unfortunately I did, and get a new job. I could go to California. I could go to Istanbul. It, it doesn't really matter. Wherever a new job takes me, I can go there. And I'm, I'm not tied down by anything. I don't have to consult with a spouse. I don't have to figure out, you know, moving the kids and their schooling and what's going to happen there. Uh, so it, I, and, uh, another thing, I didn't buy a house because I didn't have the money. So that's something else I have to worry about. I've lost this job. I have to leave this area, but I'm just renting as of right now. So I can just pick up and leave with my lease is gone instead sure. of having to worry about selling this house. So there are a lot of perks uh, to being child free. I'm not going to lie. Um, you can save money when you have, when you're married and have kids, you can travel when you have kids. It makes things a bit complicated. It can complicate things. It can make things a bit difficult. It can make things, it will make things more expensive um, since you're paying for just you. Um, but, and anyone can go into debt and, you know, single people can be crap with money too. It, it's not, 
child free people are amazing at money and are just <laughs> we're Scrooge McDuck and we're just showering in money every night. <laughs> it's not that. And if you have children, you're poor as balls and you're living in a cardboard box. That's not how it is. It's it's all about budgeting, money management, uh, and whether you can juggle your saving and your spending. So I'm not going to say that you can't have an awesome life with a spouse with kids. You know, I think my parents have done that. Uh, just for me personally, I just don't see the benefit. I don't see the fun. I, I don't see that. I don't want to take the financial risk. I don't want to take the risk to my freedom, the risk to my career, the risk to my health. Um, it, you know, be, being female, I'm going to bear the brunt of that. I'm the one that gets pregnant. I have to carry it for nine months. My body's the one that's going to go all cattywampus on me for nine months. I mean, I'm going to, well, okay, I'm fat anyway, but I'll gain even more weight. <laughs> <laughs> and when the time comes for birth, you know, I will not get into the graphic things that can happen to a woman when she gives birth, but a lot of them are pretty bad. I could die in, in pregnancy. I live in America, but I could still very much die in childbirth, especially being a black woman. It's significantly higher for me to die in childbirth as opposed to a white woman. Monica, a f fascinating insight into, I guess, yeah. your whole life, your history, your background, and, and and right up to present day, and some of the some of the difficulties you face, some of the the perks as well. And it's, I think it's quite a fitting way to to draw not only the episode but the season to a close. And in yeah. some ways, I feel like I'm no further forward than I was before we did all these <laughs> interviews. I'm still stuck in my 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 quandary. But yeah, I can I can That's really relate. To, fine. Yeah, I agree. I, I can really yeah. relate. Um, to some of the things you've said just to recap um i'm in my late 20s i hate saying that but it's true i'm a year off 30 late 20s we'll call it um being almost with, 30 um, thanks being with my fiance a few years good few years um really happy together but yeah we're still sort of in that well we won't be and, and a lot of the things you said i wrote them down just to to list them again but they really resonated with me flexibility you spoke about you mm -hmm. spoke about you you losing your job a while ago and now in the age of coronavirus every day it seems you'd look on the news and someone's yeah. losing employees someone's downsizing yeah. and yeah that that really resonates with me the financial aspect be able to do what you want you spoke about buying a car outright not being tied down financially and yes of course as you say single people child free people can have these issues too but yeah it's always going to be harder when you've got someone else to, yeah. to look after um, yeah, they're literally dependents. That's how they just depend on yeah. any form. Yeah. They they're a dependent. Hundred yeah. percent. So. Yeah. So, a massive thank you for yeah. for your input. It's been absolutely fascinating getting to know you yeah. and your and your your decision making. I guess, and we wish you all the best for the future. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I really I really enjoyed doing this, and I I hope I was a a decent asset to your podcast. Hey, it's Paul. Thank you so much for checking out Life Is It Just Me. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube for the video version. Check out our website for the latest updates, lifeisitjust.me. See you soon.